Hi guys, it's Debbie with Debbie J's Crafting Corner, back with a new not too shabby shop design team video. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I love these little owls. I want to play with everything else that's in the box of the month because it's all cute, but I'm really leaning further and further all the time over to these cute little owls. I just absolutely love them. Oh my goodness. I've already used... I've already done two projects using owls. One was with the ephemera, one was with the stamp, and I like this one enough I may go back and use that one again. Actually, I think I am. I was debating between that and one of the others because they're all adorable, but look at that little face. That is just the cutest little thing. Okay, I'm gonna start off by just stamping this off in my stamp platform and coloring up this cute little image. Love, love, love this little owl. Okay, so I've just got a scrap of some white cardstock. I think it's probably, it's either Nina or Accent Opaque. Not 100% sure which because all of those go in the same, um, same scrap bin. And I think I'm going to go ahead and stamp him over here on this side, which is the smaller side of my scrap, so I don't waste as much of the paper. Because that'll give me room to be able to make something else, right? And just stamping that down in some Gina K Amalgam ink is Nocturne. <laughs> oh, he is just too adorable. Okay. Go ahead and stamp that down and then I'm going to color him up. And I'm not 100% sure. Do I want to go with watercolors or do I want to go with my markers? Because both would work great. But I'm kind of out of practice with both. But I think I'm more out of practice with the watercolors. So I think I need to practice more with those before I start making another card with them, you know. So I will use my markers for this. So I have kind of auditioned a few different colors um, of my Spectrum Noirs to make sure that they look the way I expect them to on this specific cardstock. And of course, um, nothing actually matches my swatch anymore. It's been a while since I did the swatch. I'm going to start off, I think, with the little beak. And this is GY1, which is a yellow. And then I'm going to add a little bit of darker I think up near the top and then blend that out a little bit these are small enough images I mean they're not real small but you know it you can do as much or as little of the dimensional shading as you want I like practicing with it because I always want to get a little bit better next I'm going on with one of the browns this one is MB1 and I'm going to do that little heart shape of my little owl's face with this and try to kind of avoid the the holly, even though since that is a good, going to be a darker color, it wouldn't really matter as much. Okay, I think I'm going to add a little bit of the MB2, which is a little bit darker. A couple of areas just to give it a little bit more shape. And then I'll come back in with my MB1 to add a second layer of color down. Which will help with some of the streakiness that I am seeing on there because I don't have quite enough ink down. I always like to put usually about two to three layers of color down. A lot of times they are different colors so it, they kind of all blend together. But do, having that extra layer of color down definitely helps with any kind of streakiness you might have. And blends the colors together really, really nicely. That is looking so cute. Okay, so that one was MB1. <clears throat> okay, so next I'm going to go on to this outer layer for my bird. I think I'm going to go with MB2, which is that darker one for the base layer for all of that. And then I'll come back in with my MB4 for a little bit of darkness and a little bit of shadowing. So it's going to have the face is in the end is going to look lighter than the rest of the bird's body. Okay, then I'm going to come back in with the MB4. 
Let me see what MB3 looks like. I may not want to go quite that dark. I'm going to leave my MB3 out. I can use that one as a, um, as a blending medium, you know, that's between the two colors. And we shall see how that one looks. Well, just adding a little bit of shadow in some places. Underneath the brim of our little hat. Okay, and then I'm going to come back in with my MB2 and blend those out and then see where else I need to add. Okay. Also taking out my colorless blender because I got a little bit of brown up on the edge of my hat. Now I haven't decided 100% yet what I'm going to do with the hat, with the fur part. Give our little bird a few more tufts of feathers and then blend some of these out. And of course, pulling all of that color in, starting right near the edge of the face and coming outwards so that you can see the difference between those two areas and the face will look a little bit lighter than the outside. Okay, so now all of our feathers are done. I think that turned out pretty cute. That face, I mean, that face. <laughs> Okay, let me go ahead and put these to the side. I do think, I haven't decided what color feet I'm going to do yet. I think I'm going to go with the yellow. So I'll go ahead and add my GY2. Go ahead and add their little feet in. And now all I've got left really is going to be the hat. Now I am going to use a little bit of a gray or black marker on the eye because it looks like there's an, a place that I missed a little bit of the stamping. That's okay. It's fixable, right? So for my hat, I'm going to use DR2 as my darkest red. I mean, my lightest red. And I think I'm going to go with DR5 for my darkest. Let's see how that's going to look. It's my DR5. And then here is my DR2. Not a whole lot of difference between the two. So let me see what a darker red is going to do. Okay, I think this one will be a little bit better. So this one again is my DR5 and I do kind of want it to be even darker than this. So I'm putting some of it down in my shadow areas first, then I'll come in with a lighter color and then I'll go back in with the darker to do it again. So I'm basically going to put down like two or three layers, actually three or four layers of color here. Okay, coming back in with some more of this dark color. And then just kind of blending it out in the center where my highlighted area would be. Okay, we've also got a couple teeny tiny little berries. So I just barely touched the cardstock with my marker and now I need to come back in with one of my greens. So this one is AG2. A little bit too light. And then we've got AG4. This one is a bit dry so let me see if AG5 is a little better. Okay, AG file will work. And again, I don't need a lot of color. I just need a little bit to fill in the lines for my holly. Holly is a dark green leaf anyway. So that worked perfect. And I'm thinking I'm going to leave the whites just white instead of doing any blending. This area isn't really all that big and I don't really want to mess anything up. Next I'm going to see if I can find a, a gray that's going to work 
think this one's actually dark enough. This one is IG8, and I just want to fill in a little bit of that. There we go, on the eye. So now it doesn't look obvious that something was missing, and the color's not darker than the stamping. Okay, so next I'm going to just fussy cut out my little bird. And I'm leaving a little bit of a white border so it'll look like it was actually die cut. For the background, I decided that I'm going to use the Winter Magic Layered Images Stencil. And I'm using the poinsettia flower portion of it. Starting off with the, the flower or the red part, I'm going to use some Cranberry Fizz ink from Catherine Pooler. I'm trying to pull from the center outwards using this stencil. Reason being, the center pieces, these pieces here are all loose. So all of the, all of the veining to make it look correctly, it, and they are all a bit loose. They aren't attached on the other end. I'm going to start off with these, and I'm going to add a few different flowers around my panel. And I'm also masking off the other areas so that hopefully I won't get any, um, any ink where I don't want it. I'm just using some um, full coverage post-it notes for the masking. But you can use whatever you have. You could even use just some copy paper if that's what you've got. Um, you don't need any kind of special tools to be able to do this. I'm also using one of my larger blending brushes because that will help me get the color down faster than if I was trying to use one of the smaller ones. Okay, so now we've got two of our poinsettias on the paper. Let me add a third one, I think, right about here. So next I'm going to clean off this stencil, get all of the red off of it, and then move on to my next color. So this time around I'm going to tape it to my cardstock so that it stays in place. Then I'm going to mask off the areas that I don't want to transfer. And hopefully that will make it so that I don't get colors where I don't want it. I'm going to go first in with some of the melon ice for that center area. Then I'm going to come back in with some of the green. This one is Deck the Halls and do all of those green leaves. And for this one, I'm going to get a smaller brush and come in and make sure that I've got it a little bit darker, especially around the edges on the leaves that are covering part of the red so that these leaves will kind of stand out more and you won't notice as much that it's just covering up the red. I may actually come back in and do all of my leaves that darker color. Okay, so let's see how that first poinsettia looks. I think that turned out pretty good. So I decided that I that the I like the brightness of these poinsettias. However, I think it needs to be muted down a little bit so we can see our little bird a little bit better. So I decided I'm going to use some vellum for that. So just looking at this, got our vellum overlay and then I can have my little bird on top. But I also don't, I kind of don't like the way that he's kind of just floating there. So I went ahead and stamped and cut out the tree from in this stamp set and I'm going to use it as a branch. I have seen someone else do this. It was not my original idea, but I think this is going to be super cute doing it that way. So first I'm going to score this down to um, four and a quarter. Okay. So I scored that at four and a quarter. I'm going to fold it in half. There we go. I don't actually need the entire bit. I'm also going to go ahead and trim my panel down just a little bit. Because I like to have a little bit of a border, a matting layer around. So I'm going to trim about a quarter inch off of two sides. And that's basically going to just take it down to about an eighth of an inch on all four sides. 
Okay, do that one. I think that will look pretty good. That's going to give us a little bit of an overlay there. And then I can trim it down some more if I need to. Okay, so if I put this inside of my overlay, there we go. Um, I think... Yeah, I think what I'm going to do, see, this is that's why it's got a half a quarter inch down at the bottom. It's because I trimmed quarter inch off and it's an eighth of an inch. I don't have that little bit of a border on the top. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to put some adhesive on the back of my card panel. Put lots of that on there. Then I can center this on the other side. And make sure I come pretty close to the edge over here. I want about an eighth of an inch there. I can trim off on the bottom if I need to, but not really able to trim off on the top. Okay, now I'm going to close that up. There we go. So now we've got an overlay that's got that little bit of an edge around the outside, and then I can mount the whole thing onto a card base. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to adhere my tree. See exactly where do I want my tree and where do I want my little birdie think they'll look great right there. We add some, again, same adhesive. This is just a dot liner, but I'm going to cover the entire back of this. There is um, a new kind of adhesive, which I do not have. I do not know the name of it, that adds little dots of adhesive onto the back. And that's kind of what I'm doing with this, um, except that one, you don't waste any of it. And it's like all on a big sheet. And I think, you know, some of my buddies have got that. And I think it's really cool. But I don't have that yet. And I'm going to have it a little bit further down. So I am going to trim off part of my little tree. But now it's basically stuck perfectly onto the front of the card. And do the same thing with my little bird. Just cover him with this. You could also use a Xyron sticker maker. But I do not have a big enough one to work with this. So now my little bird is basically a sticker. Eh, let's put him right about there. I think that looks darling. Bring my paper trimmer right back out. And now I'm going to trim right at the edge of the vellum. So I'm lining up the vellum with the edge of my paper trimmer. And then I can just snip off that little bit of excess from the tree. Same thing here on this side line it up and this also gives me a chance to make sure that the vellum is actually straight which it looks like it was a little bit off okay so there we go next i'm going to add a sentiment i stamped out the merry christmas sentiment and some more of that katherine pooler ink and i'm adding that dot liner adhesive onto the back of it so that I can add this to my card. Let me use my, I always use my reverse tweezers so I can make sure I get everything straight. So otherwise I can't really see what I'm doing through my fat fingers. Okay, right about there. And I'm going to add the whole thing onto the front of a white card base. I'm going to try to get close to the edges of my vellum on the back so that I can make sure that it doesn't come apart at all using a lot of adhesive, probably more than I actually need. I'm just going to line this one up. Since the vellum is also right at four and a quarter by five and a half, I'm going to line up right with the edge. Press that down. And that looks super cute, but I realized there's something I haven't been adding to my cards lately. I haven't been adding a little extra sparkle. So I went ahead and grabbed out my Nouveau Glitter Accents and I'm going to add some snow. Now there's already some snow in the drawing and there, it's in the wrong places. It's kind of at the bottom. But that's okay. This is going to make it look like we've got snow going across this branch and on our little owl here. And this is one of those things that always adds just a little bit extra to your cards, right? Okay, so now it's going to look a little bit more like a branch. Let's add a little bit onto the end over here and onto each of the branches. And it's been at least, it's been probably six months to a year since the last time I had this out. So it is a little bit clumpy, but that is okay. I think that actually adds a little bit extra to it too. Okay. 
Add some up on top of our little bird's hat. And I probably put too much on there, but you know what? That is okay, too. Um, let me grab my pokey tool, and then I can kind of drag that around a little bit. So it's not all clumped up in just the same spot. And I'm having, I'm kind of shaping it a little bit, so it looks like part of it's drop da dripping down on the little hat. There we go, fluffing it up a little bit. And it will take a little bit to dry, especially since I did it so thick, but I think that is pretty cute. Loving this card. <laughs> so that finishes up this card for the Not Too Shabby Shop. You guys have a wonderful day. Remember, if I can make it, you can too. And be sure to check out the playlist over here for more projects where I'm using Not Too Shabby Shop products. You guys have a wonderful day. Talk to you soon. So this is going to be the fin blah 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 blah